last one we had yesterday was example four. So we're going to talk about radioactive decay, another common application of exponential functions. You've probably learned in your history classes or something at some point in time, hopefully you've heard about Chernobyl. And that was in 1986. That was before I was born, believe it or not. Um, two years before I was born. A nuclear reactor accident occurred in Chernobyl, which was in the then Soviet Union, which is now Russia. Um, it spread highly toxic radioactive chemicals such as plutonium, 239 plutonium, over hundreds of square miles, and the government evacuated the city and the surrounding area. And to this day, the city is still uninhabited for this reason, because this model represents the amount of plutonium that remains from an initial amount of just 10 pounds after T number of years. Uh, now, in this case, T equals zero represents when it happened in 1986. So let's figure out how much of the 10 pounds will remain in the year 2017. So next year, how much of this plutonium will still be hanging around? Um, so what do we need to plug into our function here? Do we plug in 2017? No, we need to figure out how many years 2017 is from 1986. So 2017 minus 1986 gives us 31. So we're actually going to plug 31 into our function. 10 times 1 half to the 31 over 24,100. So let's see what that gives us. <coughs> 10 times 1 half, you need to put it in parentheses. If it's in parentheses in your problem, you need to put it in parentheses in the calculator. Um, to the, we need to put 31 over 24, uh, 100 in parentheses as well because, like I explained yesterday, with those problems that we were doing, if you don't put parentheses, it's going to raise it to that exponent and then it's going to divide your answer by that number instead of doing it in the correct order. So 31 years later, there is still approximately 9.991 pounds. It hasn't decayed very much. So radioactive, this, this radioactive plutonium does not decay very much even in 31 years. That's why this city is still uninhabited. How about after 100,000 years? Okay, all we need to do is change that T now, it's not in the year 100,000, it's after 100,000 years. So we can just type that in to our calculator. And let's, let's kind of be smart about this. If you've never seen this, you can cancel zeros so you don't have to type so much into your calculator. 100,000 over 24,100 is the same as 1,000 over 241, just as a side note. So 1,000 over 241. Okay, finally we see some decay there. Um, it's mostly gone, but that's after that's after 100,000 years. None of us are going to be around then. The Earth may not even be around then. 100,000 years, that's a long time. <clears throat> so obviously it takes a long time for this plutonium to... Uh, decay. Now, I've got another question on there. This is radioactive decay. Radioactive decay a lot of times is also referred to as half-life. So I asked, what's the length of the half-life of 239 plutonium? Um, now, you may know, you may have seen these formulas before, so you know what part of the formula is the half-life. But if we didn't know what part of the formula it was, how might we figure that out? there'll be five pounds left, okay? So we set our equation equal to five. We're solving for T. 
We're solving for t in this problem. So if we're solving for t, our first step in solving this would be to divide both sides by that 10, okay? We can't multiply 10 times 1 half, that doesn't work, okay? 1 half has an exponent. <clears throat> 5 over 10 is 1 half. Looky there, uh, that looks like the problems we were doing yesterday, right? They have the same base. So what do we do at this point? What happens when they have the same base? What did we do when they had the same base? We set the exponents equal to each other. Well, this side over here is to the first power. This side is the power of t over 24,100. <coughs> so to solve for t, we multiply both sides by 24,100. So that means that the length of the half-life is 24,100 years. So it takes 20 over 24,000 for half of this radioactive material to decay. That's a really long half-life. Yeah. No. It's still the same. So after another 24,100 years, then another half of it will decay. So after 48,200 years, there'll be 2.5 pounds of it left. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, this is how carbon dating works. Okay, this is how they figure that out. Um, carbon-14 has a certain length of its half-life, so they measure how much of it is remaining in a material, and they estimate how much of it was originally present to figure out how long it's been decaying. Um, so, anyways, another application of exponential functions. All right, on the, um, at the bottom of your sheet, you'll see that um, I've got exponential model revisited. Yesterday, we didn't talk about uh, what it meant if there was a coefficient in front of the exponential function, so I threw a little b in there. Uh, b is the initial value. In an exponential model, b is the initial value. And like we talked about yesterday, if that base, if a is greater than 1, uh, then we've got exponential growth. Our function is increasing. If it's between 0 and 1, then it's decreasing. And what I've shown you there is that the base is equal to 1 plus the rate if it's growth, and it's 1 minus the rate if it's decay. So on the back, we've got some examples. Example 6 says to consider the model, f of x is equal to 500 times 0.2 to the x. Now, first of all, I want us, just based on what we know about exponential functions, to make a quick sketch of the model. So all I want you to do, I want you to set up a little xy axis that looks like this, and I want you to just really quickly, not exact, nothing exact, what does this exponential function look like based on what we know about the base? Is it bigger than or less than 1? Less than. So it means that our exponential function is increasing or decreasing? Decreasing. Okay? So when you see this model, this is the picture that should pop into your mind. Okay? Because that's what our exponential functions do. That's just the general shape of an exponential function. It's either increasing or decreasing. So if it's increasing, then it's just flipped over the y-axis. Yeah, yeah. Which, I mean, we could figure out really easily. The initial value is 500, so um, I'm just going to say that my scale right here is, um, that's 500. Where it crosses the y-axis, it's going to cross the y-axis at 500. Okay? <clears throat> so that's a quick sketch of the model. All right, so I just answered that. What's the initial value? The initial value is 500. It's that coefficient in front of the base. So, is this growth or decay? It is decay. So that base is equal to, that means that um, 
a is equal to 1 minus r. So a in this problem is 0 0.2. 0 0.2 is equal to 1 minus r. You can solve this however you want to. I don't like negative variables, so I'm going to add the r. 0 0.2 plus r is equal to 1. Subtract 0.2. Okay, really you could figure this out in your head, but the rate is 0.8 or 80% decay. That's how you figure that out. Similarly, if it was growth, you said the base equal to 1 plus r and solve for r. Just remember that r is going to be a decimal, so if it asks for it as a percent, you need to move the decimal to make it a percent. Okay, simple, right? Alright, let's look at one more problem. Let's, uh, they give you some words and we've got to come up with the model for it. The population of a strain of bacteria increases at a rate of 25% every half hour. Okay, so anytime you see a rate, you need to go ahead and convert that to its decimal form. Move the decimal place two places to the left, so that's 0.25. If two bacteria were in the dish at first, that is our initial value. Two is our initial value. So if we want to write the model for the population growth of the bacteria, P of T is equal to the initial value, two, times one, this is growth, it increases, so it's one plus the rate. So one plus 0.25 is 1.25 to the t or x, whichever variable you choose to use. I like to use t when we're talking about time. Okay, <clears throat> so that is the model. Let's answer this question. How many bacteria will be present after four hours? What do we need to plug into our formula? Mm, be careful. Read the details. What's the rate? 25% every half hour. So after four hours, how many times have we applied the rate? Eight times. We need to plug eight into this equation. You've got to look for details like that. Okay, and so then we crunch the numbers. Two times 1.25 to the eighth. It tells us there are about 12 bacteria. We'll round that up to the nearest whole bacteria. After eight hours, that is increased to 12 bacteria. <clears throat> okay, uh, now notice I did not do two times 1.25 and then raise it to the eighth. Okay, that is not the right answer. There's not 1,500 bacteria. Okay. Um, Exponents come before multiplication. What? If you do 1.25 to the eighth and then multiply by two, that's fine. What did you do? 